So this was all about the next is what is sprouted seeds. Do you know what is sprouted seeds? I think you all are eating at home in the morning also. In the summers it is very useful for your health because the sprouted seeds are rich in vitamins and minerals. Okay and this helps to keep you healthy. So what are the sprouted seeds? Sprouted seeds here I think from the figure it is clear to you how the sprouts is being formed. What you have to do is you have to take a jar, you have to make the holes over there, then you have to cover it with the cheese cloth or you can say muslin cloth. Okay, you have to pour the seeds and fill into the water and then you have to close the lid. After one day, after soaking it for the overnight, Next day what will happen you have to just remove the water, just keep it as such, keep it moisture. You will observe the seeds will sprout, the white part will oozes out from the seeds. So this was all about that how the sprouting takes place. So this was the process that germinating seeds at the initial stage when it is white structure has grown out of the seed, it is sprouted seed. Even you can see from here that this is the white structure that has been come out from where? From the seed, the mug seeds. From the mug seeds, what will happen? These white structure will come out. That is a germination process and that is known as a sprouting. So how you have to prepare it? This has been discussed before. These are the steps how you can make a sprouted seeds. Next is consumers. What are consumers do you know? Yes, do you know about the consumers? Consumers, those who consume the food. Food, we eat the food, we are consuming it. Do, but do you know these are also differentiated? It's not only the one that we are just eating the food, but here they are differentiated also. How they are differentiated? Let us see. So many organisms that can't make their own food, just like the plants. Plants, they have the property to make their food by own. But there are many other animals, they don't synthesize their own food. They have to depend on others. And on that basis, they are categorized further. So, these are the herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, parasites and scavengers. So, the next herbivore, here you can see that this animal, the deer, it's grazing over here. What it's eating? Green plant. Green plant, they are having the property of photosynthesis. They are dependent on sunlight, water and air. But here, see, this animal is dependent on what? The green plant. So, they are known as the herbivores. Next is our carnivores. Carnivores, these are the animals, they have, don't have the property to synthesize their food by their own. So, for that, for whom they have to depend on? They have to depend on others. You can see over here, which animal is this? Yes, this is tiger and they are dependent on others for their food. To fulfill the requirement to whom they have to depend on others. They are eating flesh. They are the carnivores. Omnivores. I think you all are familiar with this. I think many of you are vegetarian or maybe non-vegetarian. It's not a matter of fact, whatever the food habit of you. But do you know we human beings are considered as omnivores? Why? Because we depend on the plant sources as well as animal sources. So both the ways we are consuming, the plants as well as animals. So we are considered here as omnivores. So now, do you know any other example of omnivore? That is your assignment. You have to note it down and you have to tell me. Next is our, this is the picture which will clear more about it. The herbivore animals, the omnivores and the carnivores. These are the herbivore animals that depend on green plants. 
carnivores that depends on the herbivores initially and the omnivores that depends on both plants as well as animals. Next is our the different types of consumer this is just detailed view this will clear you that what are they carnivores they eat meat only herbivores they eat only plants and omnivores they eat both meat as well as plant products. Next is our the definition that will going to help you that how we are differentiating. This is understood to you that how we are differentiating the these two three things. So here the herbivores how we have to explain that the animals which eat only the plants and only plant product they are only considered as yes what are they considered as herbivores and what are the examples do you know yes exactly this is elephant rabbit horse cows and many more you can consider next one is our yes carnivores carnivores they are the animals that eat other animals and what are the examples yes these are the lizard lions tigers and crocodiles omnivores animals omnivores who are they they are the animals that like both plants as well as animals even you can consider the dog have you seen the dog eating around your house yes sometimes say they eat the flesh part of the animals and sometimes some, even you are throwing biscuits to them so that is what that is a plant product so the here dog is also considered as a omnivores and many other examples are also here that depends on both plants as well as animals lastly the what are squengers so what are squengers have you heard about this no let me tell you these are the flesh eating that are depend on the dead animals okay and do you know what is the role of the squengers in the environment they help us to clean the environment the, if they will not exist in the environment what will happen lots of dead bodies or dead things will be here and there in turn what will happen microorganisms will grow bacteria will grow over there and it will create a health hazard for the human beings as well as for the environment also so the squengers play an important role in cleaning our environment these break down the organic material that is recycling into the ecosystem of the environment and the examples yes anyone yes exactly these are the vultures even the crow also they depend on the dead decaying matter as well as they depend on the uh, plant products also sometimes you have seen around your house next is our this is the picture it will clear to you that how they depend on the dead decaying matter that are present in the environment and help in the cleaning it. So these are the pictures. These are the hyena, vulture and the crow. All these are what? These are scavengers. They help in cleaning the environment. So this was all about our chapter food. In this chapter food, what we have studied today? We studied about the food, its sources, what are the ingredients, what is nectar, what is honey bee and the different modes of consumers the different types of consumers these are herbivores carnivores and omnivores now it's a turn that how much you get that you have to do one assignment these are you have to soak the seeds you have to show step by step the sprouting of the seeds you have to list down different plant products that are edible you have to differentiate different types of consumers giving each example of each. For example, you have to tell me the herbivores, then example of herbivores, five each. Then carnivores, five each. Omnivores, five each. And the diagram which will help you to show the different parts of the plants with their functions also. Fine? And what do you mean by vegetarian and non-vegetarian? As I discussed in between our, my lecture and this is the last but not the least you have to make your favorite dish with your elders at your home with their help not alone please note it down you have not to do it alone you have to take the help of your elders at home 
and you have to make your favorite dish with them and you have to make one video thank you and have a nice day eat healthy stay fit because healthy mind dwells in a healthy body